bloody man is that? He can report us Simeth by his flight of the revolt, the new state. So this is the sergeant who like a good and hardy soldier for against my captivity. Hail, brave friend. Say to the king, the knowledge of the broil as thou dost leave it. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their arms. The merciless McDonwald, worthy to be a rebel for the multiplying villainies of nature to swarm upon him. From the western isles of kerns and gallow glasses is supplied. And fortune on his damned quarrel showed, smiling like a rebel whore. <laughs> but all's too weak for brave Macbeth. Well, he deserves the name, disdaining fortune, with brand of steel, which smoked with bloody execution. Like Valor's minion, he carved out his passage till he faced the slave, which ne'er shook hands nor bade farewell to him until he had seen him from knave to chaps and fixed his head upon our battlement. Yeah! <laughs> oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentleman. Mm. As the sun dims his reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders break, and from the spring whence comfort seemed to come, discomfort swelled. Oh. Mark, King of Scotland, Mark, no sooner just as had, the compelled the skipping kerns to trust their heels, but the Norwegian lord, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. This may not this our captains, Macbeth and Banquo. Yes, <laughs> like like hares the lion or eagle sparrow. If I say sooth, I must report that as the cannons are charged with double cracks, so they doubly redoubled their strokes against the foe. Except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds or memorize another Golgotha. I cannot tell. But I am faint. My gashes cry for help. So well thy words become thee as thy wounds. They smack of honor both. Go get him, surgeon. Ah, uh, who comes here? Now the worst exceeding. If it be so, for Banquo's issue have I filed my mind. For them, the gracious Duncan, have I murdered. But rancors and the vessel of my peace, only for them, and mine eternal jewel given to the common enemy of man, to make them kings. The seed of Banquo, kings. Rather than so, come fate into the list and champion me to the utterance. Who's there? Now go to the door. Stay there till we call. Was it not yesterday we spoke together? It was, so please your majesty. Well then, now, have you considered of my speeches? Know that it was he in the times past which held you so under fortune, which you thought had been our innocent self. This I made good to you in our last conference, passed in probation with you, how you were born in hand, how crossed the instruments, who wrought with them, and all things else that might to half a soul or to a notion crazed, say thus did Banquo. You have made it known to us. I did so and went further, which is now our point of second meeting. Do you find your patience so predominant in your nature that you can let this go? Are you so gospel to pray for this good man and for his issue, whose heavy hand hath bowed you to the grave and beggared yours forever? We are men, my liege. Ah, in the catalog you go for men. As hounds and greyhounds, Mongrels, spaniels, curs, shocks, water rugs, and demi wolves are all clapped by the name of dogs. The valued file distinguishes the swift, the slow.
slow, the subtle, the housekeeper, the hunter, everyone, according to the gift which bounteous nature hath in enclosed, whereby he does receive particular addition from the bill that writes them all alike. And so of men! Now, if you have a station in the file, not in the worst rank of manhood, say it! And I will put that business in your bosoms whose execution takes your enemy off! Grapples you to the heart and love of us who wear our health but sickly in his life, which in his death were perfect. I am one, my liege, whom the vile blows and buffets of the world have so incensed that I am reckless what I do despite the world. <laughs> and I another, so weary of disaster and tugged with fortune, that I would set my life upon any chance to mend or be rid of it. Both of you know, Banquo was your enemy. True, True my lord. lord. So is he mine. And in such bloody distance that every minute of his being thrusts against my nearest of life. And though I could, with bare-faced power, sweep him from my sight and bid my will avouch it, yet I must not, for certain friends that are both his and mine, whose loves I may not drop, wail his fall, whom I myself struck down. <laughs> And thence it is that I, to your assistance, do make love, masking the business from the common eye for sundry ways to reason. We shall, my lord, do as you command us. Though our lives... Your spirit shine through you. Within this hour at most, I will advise you where to plant yourself. Acquaint you with the perfect spy of the time, the moment on it. For it must be done tonight. Something from the palace always thought that I require a clearness and to leave no rubs nor botches in the works. Cleance, his son, that keeps him company, whose absence is no less material to me than is his father's, must embrace the fate of that dark hour. Resolve yourselves apart. I'll come to you anon. We are resolved, my lord. I call upon you straight. Abide within. It is concluded. Banquo, thy soul's flight, if it find heaven, must find it out tonight. Mistrust, since he delivers our offices and what we have to do to that direction just. Then stand with us. The west yet glimmers with some streaks of day, now spurs the lady traveler apace, and near approaches the subject of our watch. Hark, I hear horses. Then tis he. His horses go about. But he does usually, as all men do, from hence to the palace gate, make it their walk. A light, a light. Tis he. Stand to it. Ah! Ah! 
flight. Is that not the way? What is down? The sun is flat. We have lost the best half of our affair. Well, let's away and see how much is done. Thanks to your majesty. Thanks to your majesty. See, they encounter thee with their hearts, thanks. Both sides are even. Here I'll sit with this. <laughs> Be large in mirth. Anon we'll drink a measure of the table round. There's blood upon my face. Uh, uh -huh. Tis Banquo's then. Better thee without than thee within. Is he dispatched? My lord, his throat is cut. That I did for him. Thou art the best of the cutthroats. <laughs> Yet he's good that did the like for Fleance. Uh, but thou didst it, thou art the non for real. Most royal serf, Fleance escaped. <laughs> and comes my fit again. I had hell's been perfect. Whole as the marble, founded as the rock, as broad and general as the casing air. But now I am cabined, cribbed, confined, bound in to saucy doubts and fears. But what bank will save? Ay, my good lord, safe. In a ditch he bides with twenty clenched gashes in his head. <laughs> the least depth to nature. There the grown serpent lies. The worm that's fled hath nature that in time will venom breed. No teeth for the present. <laughs> No. Get me going. Tomorrow, we will hear ourselves again. Fair dame, I am not to you known, though in your state of honor I am perfect. I, I doubt some danger does approach you nearly. If you will take a homely man's advice, be not found here. Hence, with your little ones, to fright you thus, methinks I am too savage to do worse to you were fell cruelty, which is too nigh your person. Heaven preserve you. I dare abide no longer. Whither shall I fly? I have done no harm. But I remember now, I am in this earthly world where to do harm is often laudable. To do good sometimes account a dangerous folly. Why then, alas, am I to put up that womanly defense to say I have done no harm. What are these faces? Where is your husband? There will be no place so unsanctified where such as thou mayst find him. He is a traitor. Thou liest, <laughs> thou shag-haired villain! <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ah! 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 Ah!